I really wish that the electric car owners were talking about these things openly and making sure that everyone knew about it before you go and get suckered into buying an electric car too. There was a lot of things that we considered before we bought our electric car and I, we just weren't sure if it was right for us, but all of the indicators were saying that, yeah, electric car was definitely kind of in our future. And it was just a matter of trying to find one that actually made sense for us. So a little bit about our history. Uh, my wife has been driving a Mercedes ML 550 for the past five or six years, she's put almost 300,000 kilometers on that ML 550 and it was starting to need some work. So we had neglected a lot of the work for a long time and it was hitting that point where it was either gonna cost a few thousand dollars to really get it back up to where we needed it to or it was time to sell it and move into something else. The problem was, to move in a Mercedes up to the next class meant that we were gonna be spending like 40 to $50,000, which we just didn't really wanna spend, especially since she drives around 2,500 to 2,800 kilometers per month. So it adds up really fast. She's putting about 30 to 40,000 kilometers per year on her car. Not only that, the fuel cost was crazy. We were spending between $800 and $900 a month on fuel. And that's where the electric car conversation really started to take off because everyone knows the cost per kilometer is much lower in an electric car. But first, we gotta get the sponsor out of the way. Gams Go. Are you paying too much for Netflix, Spotify, Disney Plus, Crunchyroll, Duolingo, Canva, or Adobe? Gamsgo has you covered with premium shared subscriptions for a fraction of the price directly from the distributor. Yes, Gamsgo is the shared premium experience that you've been looking for that saves a ton of money. I personally use Gamsgo for my Netflix, my Spotify, my Disney Plus, and my Crunchyroll subscriptions, and I have saved tons of money by switching to Gamsgo. Switching to Gamsgo is as easy as clicking the link in the description or up in the title card, which will take you to the main Gamsgo website, select the services that you're looking for, and buy them. But to show you how easy it is, we're gonna take 30 seconds and we're gonna sign up for Netflix. So we've clicked the affiliate link and I'm gonna click purchase now on Netflix. Now we have an option to buy three months or six months. I'm gonna buy a six month membership. I'm gonna say activate auto renewal because you don't wanna miss out anyway. Now in my case, I only need one profile. That means that I get one of the five included shared profiles with my Netflix account and I can install it on one device in my home. Do you have multiple devices in your home? You might want to switch to the five profiles option, which also unlocks multiple devices so that you can use all of your profiles across multiple devices. But in my case, one profile is plenty. Now this is the most important step. It's gonna say, do you have a promo code? Yes, I do. And the promo code is GEARS. We're gonna apply our promo code and it's gonna say, this is a valid promo code. We're gonna click to go to payment and then we're gonna enter in all of our details. This is a one-time payment of just $21.26. That is crazy cheap for premium Netflix on one device with one profile. I'm going to pay now. I'm gonna enter my credit card information and that's it. Once you've paid, you get immediate access to Netflix and it's as simple as logging into your Gamsgo account, getting the username and pass key, and then going to legit Netflix. Now it's gonna immediately say, well, who is this? Now I am account number three, Gears and Tech. And it's gonna ask for my pin code because I locked this down. Once I have my pin code in, now instantly I am in the full premium Netflix experience. This gives me HD Netflix, I can download it, and it's that simple. And it works the same on all your other favorite streaming platforms. This is truly an amazing deal, you don't wanna miss it. Click the link down below to grab your deal. But were we missing something? We didn't know. So we decided the best approach would be to, to get the cheapest electric car that we could find that checked off at least our minimum requirements for any vehicle, electric or gas. And in this case, 
we arrived at a Mustang Mach-E. Now we got the premium Mach-E, but we got the base model with the base battery, not the extended range, none of that. We did get the dual motor, so it has front wheel drive and rear wheel drive to make an all wheel drive setup. But there was a lot of things that I didn't know about that car in particular and about electric cars in general. And I really wish somebody would have explained that to me before we went and spent all of that money. So if I were to talk about what those are, first of all, range anxiety. A lot of people talk about range anxiety as, you know, that, that looming, you see the distance to empty, the distance to empty, and it's different than in a gas car because in an electric car, you really need a good source of high power electricity to recharge it quickly. Yes, you can plug it into any wall outlet anywhere, including out on the go at a restaurant, a store, a friend's house, wherever, but it takes so long. In fact, to charge off of a 120 volt outlet, it's going to take you the better part of 24 hours to recharge that car, which just isn't feasible for most people, especially when the gas alternative is to pull into any network of gas stations and within five minutes, you're ready to hit the road again. So obviously range anxiety is something that a lot of people have fresh in their minds as, you know, is it really gonna be worth it? So in our situation, my wife was actually driving, uh, you know, about hundred kilometers a day and most electric cars will do hundred kilometers just fine. But we live up here in Canada, and the next question was, how does it handle the winters? Uh, I can tell you guys a story, actually. So up here in Canada, we're, we're in Alberta, okay? And it gets really, really cold to the tune of minus 50 degrees Celsius. Now, it's not minus 50 all the time, but it does have periods of minus 50. And what I can say is the electric car that we have, the Mach-E, it was good to about minus 35 without any issues. In fact, when we have the cold spells, I was actually reaching for the electric car way more than I was going for the gas car. And the reason was that gas car took about 30 minutes to warm up enough that it actually was warm inside. Whereas the electric car, yeah, I did have it in this garage and we did have it plugged in, but I was able to hit the pre-start button and within five minutes, the inside of that car was warm enough that I could actually hit the road and get out on the, on the roads and coupled with the all wheel drive and some really good tires, it actually performs beautifully in the snow. Also, the batteries are usually mounted down low and that means that you get a lot of low end center of gravity. So it performs really good in that snow, especially with the all wheel drive and the traction for that. So it, it does do great in the snow. The big problem is when it gets closer, like minus 45, minus 50, it just can't keep up. It's essentially a blow dryer, an electric blow dryer, just trying to warm up the air and blow it in your face. There's no engine to draw heat from, and so it has to make that from electricity. Your range certainly drops, but we were still able to go 100 kilometers to work and back in a day without any kind of issue as far as electricity and, and the batteries running out or anything like that. So it's, it's not like we were in trouble. Our regular daily routine was absolutely covered and at nighttime we could plug the car in, it charged back up and we we're good to go the next morning. Something that a lot of people aren't talking about is the cost of maintenance. We've had our car for a year now and we have put zero maintenance into it. In fact, we haven't even worn out the uh, wiper blades yet. So we do swap our tires. So I put winter tires on in the winter, summer tires on in the summer. But other than that, there's been no maintenance to do to it at all. And with the amount of kilometers that my wife drives, we were doing oil changes very, very regularly. So we're saving a lot of money on the, on the regular maintenance that you would have otherwise. Cost of fuel. As I said, we were spending eight to $900 a month on fuel. And we essentially just took the $800 we were spending on gas and put it towards the car payment. The car payment is around $800 a month. So we don't spend the money on the fuel anymore and we spend it on the car. So we were able to get a brand new, fully warranted electric car for the same price as the gas that we were spending for her Mercedes. Now understand, this is not a typical use case. Like most people are not driving as much as us, but we certainly were driving that much. Electricity increase. You're probably wondering how much did the electricity increase? So our electricity bill went up by about $200 a month 
for the driving that my wife was doing. So you think about it, charging at home. Now that is a big deal for us. So my wife does not have to go to the gas station ever anymore. We got a 50 amp level two charger installed in our house, which it can be expensive. The dealership that we got the car from said that they could do the install for $2,000 with a reputable electrician. And that is quite inexpensive, but it's an extra cost. Once you get that charger in though, the charger gives us roughly one kilometer of range per minute. So it only takes a couple hours to recharge the battery from empty to full. We rarely hit empty anyway, because anywhere we need to go is within the 370 kilometer range that this car actually has. Now, battery degradation. Am I worried about battery degradation? No, not really. So Ford has guaranteed that this battery will have at least 80% capacity in eight years, or they, they replace it on warranty. So I'm not worried about it. I plug this car in whenever we're near power. I treat it like my cell phone. If there's power, I plug it in. I don't do like a lot of these guys say, where you gotta drain the battery all the way down and then charge it back up. No, when we get home, if we got you know 95% range, we plug the battery in, take it back up to 100. Partly because I wanna see how long this battery lasts. But the main reason why I'm not concerned about the uh, eight year battery life is quite simply, cars aren't made the way they used to be. And the, the days of having a car run for 20, 30, 40 years or to going 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 kilometers, those days are over. Cars are getting built cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. They're breaking as soon as the warranty runs out. They're breaking as soon as the five-year term runs out. And owners are more frequently having to go buy a new car because it's just so expensive to repair these newer vehicles. So I don't think that your, your gas car is gonna last much longer than eight years anyway. And I know I'm gonna put an asterisk next to that because many people I'm sure are freaking out right now at that statement. But that's how I feel and I, I think we're gonna see that. But for me, I'm treating it like a disposable commodity. After eight years, if I get eight years out of it, so what? I'll toss it and get another one. And, and that's kind of the, the consumerism lifestyle that we're in now anyway. The number one question that I get when somebody sees that I have an electric car is, now that you've had one, would you buy one again? Yes. I absolutely would buy one again, knowing everything that I know and doing everything that we've done over this last year. For its small downfalls, it makes up for it in so many different ways. It is fun to drive, it is fast, it's, well it's not fast, it's quick. We didn't get the fast one, we got the quick one. But it's quiet, it's, it's just so convenient to just get in, push the start button and drive away. You're not listening to this noisy engine starting up. I am not trying to save the environment and I did not buy it to save the environment. I bought it because I wanted the performance. I bought it because I thought it would be cheaper to operate than a gas car and it has been. It's totally been cheaper than a gas car. Now, we also did get solar panels put on our roof of our house so that we can actually charge that car using 100% green electricity and offset our electric bill for our house which it helps, but you don't have to do that. If you want more details about that, I, I did put a different video uh, showing our solar panel system as well. But overall, the experience of owning the electric car has been good. And it's not just, I don't wanna say it's only a Mustang Mach-E. I did not buy a Tesla, I looked at a Tesla, but we decided in our case that the Mach-E was just more of a traditional kind of car with electric motors and it seems to be the most comparable to a Tesla as far as build quality and that sort of thing. And Tesla build quality is kind of being scrutinized a little bit now too, because it's not that great. There's a lot of other electric cars that really catch my eye and we've gone electric, we're not going back. We will have an electric car in our stable for a long, long time. But, and this is the big thing that, that many of the non-electric owners are saying, what about road trips? What about if I need to go somewhere in emergency and my car's not charged? We will also always own a gas car or a hybrid electric car. So something that you can put gasoline in. So I, I don't think that everyone should go out and switch their entire fleet to electric cars. But if you have two cars, 
I do think that having one of those as electric is a game changer. It makes a huge difference for just local commutes, running around, putzing around town, and for anything other than a long commute. Certainly, if your daily lifestyle requires you to drive longer than what the range of the car would support, don't even consider it. It's not worth it. But if you can get to work and back, to school and back, to your friend's house and back, wherever you need to go and back, then it definitely is worthwhile. We actually work, you know, 99% of our time we spend within a very small radius to our house. And there's that 1% of the time where we're going outside that radius. I take my truck then, and we're usually gonna take the truck anyway. We're taking the RV, we're towing the boat, we're doing an activity that requires a bigger vehicle anyway, so it's no big deal to take the truck. So as we come to the end of our first year, the car's still going strong. We've got about 35,000 kilometers on the odometer after one year. Now that's a lot of driving in one year. We're gonna have this thing miled out in five years from now. It will have more kilometers than what we really think we wanna have on it. So our plan is to trade it in and upgrade to something else at that point. We're looking mostly towards the luxury segment. I really like the Audis and even Mercedes has some interesting electric cars coming out. So we're, we're keeping an eye out for those just to see where the battery technology goes. But for now, I consider all of the electric cars on market more of like a first gen electric car. So it's really hard to say this one's better than that one or this battery is better than that battery. They're all kind of about the same. There's no standout leader. Even Tesla isn't as much of a standout leader as you would expect, mostly because these other manufacturers have really caught up quite quickly to the Tesla standards. And you've got automotive manufacturers who know how to build a car. So they know how to build a car and now they're just putting electric components in it versus Tesla, which knew how to build electric components but had to figure out how to build an electric car. So they're kind of on the same plane in my opinion. But as the technology advances and as the battery tech kind of gets more mature, we're gonna start to see longer range batteries. We're gonna start to see more efficient motors. We're gonna see a lot of breakthroughs in especially the range of, of those cars. And that's why we went for kind of the cheapest car we could get that had the options that we wanted because we knew that something more exciting was gonna come out within the next few years when we were ready to actually go and buy you know, invest a few more dollars in a better car. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.